how does it feel to be the newest inductee into the Hall of Fame and be a part of the 2024 class? Yeah, it just, I mean, first, it's a tremendous honor. It still feels unreal. Um, but at the same time, each day that has passed now, and it's starting to sink in a little bit more. Now you're starting to, you know, having to do the list to get things ready for it. And you're like, man, it's really happening. So uh, it just, it's a lot going on at the moment, but a great moment. Yeah. And what you've experienced in your NFL career, really in life, a lot of people will never get that experience. So when you got that knock on the door from Bryant Young, just describe that feeling of, of I guess, finally getting into the Hall of Fame uh, after waiting, you know, five years as being eligible to get in. What was that feeling like? Yeah, it, it was a great feeling. It was it was a a feeling that was you know it was more of you know it's uh, it's on time it, it's time and you know I had said before that you know whenever it happens that you know I would um, be appreciative and beyond grateful and I didn't know when it would happen you know uh, or if it would but to see that it, it happened um, you know I, I it, it's beyond words I, I don't even have the words to to put it in to to play. Now, P. Willie, we do our research on this show, so I, I've seen other people ask you these types of questions, and you mentioned that uh, part of this process was, you know, your nieces asking you to put together a basketball goal for them, and I, and I heard <laughs> that you hadn't put it together quite yet because you got interrupted by that knock. Have you finished? Have you finished putting together that basketball hoop yet? Oh uh, man, you had done your research. <laughs> no, I, I, haven't, I haven't put it together. I haven't finished putting it together yet, but I most definitely. Um... We'll do that. And, um, yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was a tremendous day. Just the fact that, you know, I was putting that together for them. And I remember when I was around that age, um, of putting up, uh, me and my dad putting up our first basketball goal and to be doing that for them and to get to knock, it was just, um, a complete moment. When I look at your career, I had the honor of playing against you. And anytime, uh, we lined up, I think we played in 2013. And this is after the Super Bowl year for you guys. And I just knew with you and Navarro Bowman, it was always going to be a problem. You know, you guys were going to be physical at the point of attack. You could run sideline to sideline. And I just have to ask you this question. Why did you retire at 30 years old? I wanted, I wanted more P. Willie on the football field because I knew you weren't going to, we weren't going to be playing against you guys every single year. But mm -hmm. I think the fans also wanted more of you. Uh, why did you retire at what many of us feel was such a young age? Man, that's that's a great question, and you know I, I've hit on it before, and you know I'll, I'll hit on it a little bit now uh, from a high level perspective. Um, you know, it was one of those things where it was it was time. They say when you know, uh, you know. And I remember having conversations with myself. I've always been one of those people that you know I talk to myself. And one of the hardest things I've learned in life is to is to be able to be one hundred percent real with yourself and honest with yourself and I remember my rookie year um, having a question. I remember asking some of the old heads. I was like, how do you know when it's time to retire? And they looked at me like, why are you talking about retiring? I'm like, because, you know, I, I was learning when you start something, there's going to be uh, a finish, there will be an exit. But I also don't want to be one of those guys that that I saw, like my the guys I, I idolized growing up uh, playing the game and saw what happened to them as they got, you know, over that hump. And so I just wanted to try to, be mindful of that, but also give it everything I had. And so, yeah, I just, when that time came, um, it just felt like everything was, it just, everything was connecting. And I just remember looking at, thinking about Navarro and I and where we were at that point in time and what I felt like. And I was like, man, I always felt like he was, he was the next in line, that he was the protege right. to me, knowing that like, I always felt, and I also, I also had this feeling too, that like, man, I, I didn't know if I, how long I would play uh, the game. I just said, man, I'm gonna give it everything I have for whether it's injuries or whether it be time that my body said, you know what, Patrick, like it's it's enough um, that I will be able to walk away. But it wasn't just walking away. When I looked to my right or and or to my left, you know, looking at Navarro, I was like, you know what, this is it's his time now. And yeah. you know, this in, in the words of in the words of uh, Simba, you know, Lion King been one of my favorite movies growing up. I remember Mufasa telling Simba, you know, one day. You know, the sun is going to set on him and it's going to rise on Simba. And um, I just remember that that feeling and going into that last season and just what it felt like. I mean, I didn't have my dog beside me. You know, I didn't have, you know, Navarro. And I was just like, man, something just is just not right. And, and it's more to it, um, you know, leading up to it and everything. But, yeah, it was just it was time.
RG3 and the Ones is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. We make it bank, people. It's as simple as this. You need to select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Boom. Daily fantasy sports is made easy with Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. It's a lot of money, y'all. 